Yo, John Fitch here. This is a beautiful Sunday night, and that means it's time for John Fitch Knows Nothing. And uh, I'm rocking out in my, my cool glasses, much cooler than uh, your Gucci glasses. I'll take these any day. It's Sunday, man. It was a good weekend. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, <clears throat> I did some camping this weekend. It was a lot of fun. Haven't been out camping in a long time, but it's California camping. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Is there, you're kind of like a, a uh, just like a push down area, you know, it's not really in the woods. Your, your cars, your vehicles aren't very far away. Excuse me. There's a lot of people and lots close to you that are in just RVs. And I guess it's, uh, yeah, that's camping. But to me, it feels like sleeping in a parking lot. You're sleeping in a parking lot. You're not even like in a field. It's just kind of like dirt area. So it's nice. I picked a spot that was back in by the trees and some grass. Because I, I like, I don't know, I feel like it's more camping when you're in the woods, like right in the woods. But, you know, there's like the national park stuff. So there's places to go and do hikes and whatever. That was fun. But I didn't, I didn't get to catch any of the fights, none of the events this past weekend. So it was a violence-free weekend for me. You hear the tiny violins, but totally worth it because there were uh, animals involved. There were uh, deer and uh, little raccoons. There's like they're like America's monkeys, raccoons. They're like super smart. And at the national park, we're at uh, Pinnacles. They're pretty like domesticated. They were used to people camping and being around. They weren't, weren't very scared of you. They wouldn't get super close with, you know, seven feet, <laughs> like, you know, two, two big skips and I could have kicked one maybe, but they weren't real jumpy. They were fine with uh, getting close and then <laughs> sniffing your tent. It was a good time. Uh, if you guys saw any of the uh, fights, was there anything even worth talking about? Yep, I hear you. Trash pandas. But they're more they're more like, I don't know, garbage monkeys. Because pandas are kind of lazy, aren't they? Raccoons. They're acrobatic and sneaky, little ninjas, breaking into stuff. Um, they got into some like garbage bags. Somebody said they were trying to undo the zipper. They're smart enough to like know how to go, like hit it, chase them off <laughs> the tent. Oh man! <clears throat> See, Roxy's on here saying, uh, "John, good evening. You were mentioned at the end of the morning combat UFC 280 preview show. Interesting. How was I mentioned? Hmm. Um. Somebody. Uh, Somebody looking for trouble? <laughs> huh? Somebody poking the bear? What happened? Danny Arnold saying that I'd like camping in northwest Montana. It sounds kind of open space. You're just there out on your own. It was cool because they were like deer. I went into the woods to find a stick, find a stick for uh, hiking and whittling and i did i did find my phone nice one but i was down working on this little tree like shaving some stuff off to take this this branch and i hear something rustling i look up and like 10 feet away was a little doe little deer little female deer and i was like shook the tree i was like shh, shh, trying to scare it off because i've had that happen 
in Indiana before, being in the woods and the, as a kid, working on something, doing something, and you're not making much noise and not moving much, and then the deer wanders up. <laughs> but the second you make a sound, that thing's gone. But I was like, hey, hey, hey. And this, this deer was just chilling. It's just chilling. I feel like if I had bad intentions, I could have hit him with a rock or a stick or something. Deer is lucky we weren't allowed to. See, that's weird too. You're not allowed to have fire pits. It was so so dry. It was like high uh, forest fire warning stuff, and uh, no fires it's, unless you had like a portable propane cooker. And then most people there have like a big like setup with range cooking and stuff like that, and they have like full on meals. It's wild. I mean, the boys had sandwiches and. <laughs> sandwiches and beef sticks I made a bunch of hard boiled eggs <laughs> oh man I had some had some trail mix too it was, uh, <laughs> good but man that was uh, it was wild it was wild it's a different thing we're doing the scouts and the scouts is good for them out here because it is it's, it's weird for me I still uh, you know I failed in adapting to being out this way because I'm not used to having to go and drive. You know, we had to drive like an hour and a half, two hours to get to this place before we could camp in a parking lot. <laughs> and it's cool because there's still, you know, a ton of awesome nature around on the national park, but there's a lot of people and it's, I'm just not used to it. I'm still not used to it. It's weird. I'm used to Indiana. Let's just go over to somebody's field and <laughs> go in their uh, woods. Let's go to Bob's woods. But it's cool. It's cool. At the same time, we went on a nice hike. And that's what I want to talk about today was the hike. Because it wasn't a treacherous hike. I've been, I've been on worse. It was three miles total round trip. And there was not much climbing. There was some, a little bit of climbing. And, but it was like stairs and stuff. It wasn't too much, like super challenging climbing. But um, it wasn't, you know, just walking in the neighborhood. It took a good bit of time to, to walk walk it you know it's a couple few hours here we go we went about eight yeah whole the whole thing with everybody going there and coming back was around three three and a half hours but that's like you know talking to kids and everything with the scout stuff so it wasn't super challenging like i didn't break a sweat i didn't need water it was a nice it was a nice day nice stroll i was more there like watching kids and making sure everybody was okay uh, but I could see everybody in the park. I could see everybody who's around, everybody who's going and walking and doing stuff. And it was interesting to see um, how people could handle that little bit of stress. Because it wasn't, it wasn't walking around the mall, but there was definitely, you know, not super challenging. It wasn't impossible. A regular person, the regular person shouldn't have a problem traversing that that trail it was a it was a pinnacles bear gulch or something like that not terribly you know it's a nice stroll you get to see these big boulders you go through some caves a little bit so it's fun for the kids because they got to bring their 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 flashlights and their headlamps but the caves are really short you know uh 20 10 20 meters long you're you're in the cave and the caves are all formed because huge boulders like fell on each other and there's big gaps in between the boulders. It's kind of wild because there's some there's things that look like they're just barely hanging on. <laughs> and the rock's gonna fall at any moment. 
There's some good spots that people like to go uh, rock climbing at too on that uh, on that hike and that trail. So we did see a number of um, rock climbers. I thought that was pretty cool. What's going on, Model Vanguard? Danny Arnold saying, back in Montana, it'll only take you 20 minutes or less to be all the way into the thick of the woods, away from the edge of town. That's something. That's something. And it's a different type of, you know, I'm kind of a minimalist when I'm camping. I'm not, a, I'm not glamping. You know? I feel like it's putting a pig in a, in a party dress. When you do that, you know what I mean? You know what I mean when I say that? Putting a pig in a party dress? Then you fancy it up all you want. Put some lipstick on it. Still a pig. <laughs> Still a pig. You know? So, like, if I'm going to be out laying in the dirt <laughs> without a shower, pooping in the dirt hole, there was there's bathrooms, of course, on the by the parking area. So, you have none of that. But if you're doing it like that, do you need all the, you know, the fancy cot and stuff? Am I too much of a minimalist? I don't know. Back to the hike. At the end of the hike, there's like a nice little little reservoir, little pool that's there. So it's a place to hang out and rest before you come back, have a snack. The kids had a snack. They had some of their drinks. And then we're able to come back. You know, we came back at a slightly different route, but it was about the same time. A little bit faster back because it was a little more downhill. But you notice, like, right away, there's no obese people there. There's just none. There isn't a single person on the park anywhere that you could see, that I could see, that's obese. Nobody. There were some people who were overweight. Anywhere from 10 to 40 pounds overweight, I think. And you could see how just being that much overweight limited what they could do and the enjoyment they're capable of having. Because there was some serious struggles with making that hike. Luckily, it wasn't very hot. It wasn't a very hot day. We went early in the morning. Uh, so, you know, temperatures were low 70s, maybe. High 60s, low 70s weren't, weren't bad. And then there were a lot of rocks and shade throughout the, the hike. And even when we were up by the water for a while with um, the sun right on us, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. You know, I had on a fleece and I took that off and had my cutoff shirt on underneath and, you know, I was fine. I think it was cool. All right. What's up? Thor, what's up, buddy? So Skull, you, you savage John Fitch. All of us need to stay fit and moving at all ages. It is vital. Preach, brother. You heard it. You heard it from the man. <laughs> and that's. And that's what I want to talk about, right? We are some times where there's narrow space to climb up. Um, and this, this is beautiful. You know, I'm complaining. I'm like, I, I always like to complain. But I still have had a great time. And it was beautiful. And I'm are you happy I went? And I'll go back again. You know, I'll probably take the, the kids myself and the girlfriend a little bit just so we can do some of the stuff by ourselves. Because, you know, they were with their scout friends the whole time. So I was mostly just kind of chaperoning uh, and enjoying it by myself. Um, so, yeah, we'll go back. But I'm, I like to complain. I like to complain. If you haven't, it's your first time here, guys. If it's your first time watching the stream. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So it wasn't a uh, super hot day. It shouldn't have been a difficult but it's still, you're still going up, walking up, um, you know, steep steps. 
there are steps and a handrail that they put in, but it's still fairly steep. You're going up uh, maybe two, three flights, a couple places. You know, um, there are some places where there's some challenging footsteps you have to take. So in order for you to kind of enjoy this walk or this hike or enjoy, you know, because you got to drive an hour and a half, two hours to get there in order for you to enjoy everything that that hike and the scenery and stuff has to offer, like you got to be in some some form of shape, some kind of basic fitness level, survival level. You know, you need to be doing something. <laughs> Something, guys. You got to be doing something. Always doing something. If if you can't continue to do basic things like a three mile hike, you're gonna have a, sh a short life quality, right? Your life quality is not gonna be good for that long. You start getting into your fifties, and you can't you can't do a hike like that. You're going to be hunched over, being pushed around a wheelchair or something or one of those little, one of those scooters in your 60s. Is that what you want to be doing? Or do you want to be able to, like, fly through that three-mile hike like nothing with your grandkids? How, how do you want to do it? How do you want to live? Is that, is that donut that good? It's that good. That you don't want to look at the the mountain scape. You don't want to see the the suns, not the suns, the sun, the the sunset. You know, around the camp. You don't want to do that. There are some spots where you could like step up on the rocks and then look out into the the rest of the rocks and the mountains and stuff. It was crazy, man. There's some corners you're walking on the trail and you're just surrounded by the woods and the trees and the things you're not paying attention and then you come to like a clearing and it's open and you turn and look and then it's just like these huge rocks huge rock face structure and it's just like it's nuts it's crazy it's like instantly humbling like oh i'm tiny i'm nothing <laughs> i'm so insignificant holy Holy moly. I always think of like Kong coming over the over the hill. It's not a mountain. I was going to call it a mountain, but it's a hill or a big giant rock. That's what it felt like. I was like, man, that's crazy. And um, just the basic enjoyment of being able to do those type of activities. And there were, there were some mothers um, – out and about on the on the hikes, you know, some with very small children. And it's a challenging hike for a child, a small child, to be able to climb up and walk. And there's some spaces where, you know, it's you gotta you gotta be careful where you're putting your foot on the rock or you might slip. And you got little feet, you're not very coordinated. And those kids they gotta get they gotta get carried a little bit sometimes. <laughs> So yeah, you got to, you know, you could be carrying around 30, 40 pounds of extra fat on your body. And then now you got to pick up a kid who's another 30, 40 pounds. I mean, that's, you want to carry, carry 50 to 80 pounds with you for three mile, a three mile hike. I bet you that would make that hike one hell of a challenge. One hell of a challenge. Man. It's a good question. Hamza. Hamza Mir is saying, why isn't UFC getting good Brazilian fighters anymore? I think is what he's saying. Uh, and um, because it's not a real sport, right? They can give out rankings to anybody they want to. They control ascension to the title. They control who fights for the title. They even can make up new titles if they want to. They already have a foothold in the Brazilian market. They already have monopoly there. They already have 
what is it, Kambache and whoever else are feeders into the UFC through the fight pass and, you know, getting to jump from one promotion to the next if they do a good job. <laughs> so you don't necessarily get the best fighters rising to, rising to the top because some of the times the guys they like aren't the best fighters. They're the guys who are the best company men, the guys who listen the most. You know, and they would rather put those guys, move those guys forward, use them as a body, maybe get them beat up. Maybe every once in a while you'll find a star or a stand-up, stand-out guy that, that they can make money off of. But until it's treated as a sport or turned into an actual sport where you can ascend and your rank is something you own and your rank is something you can use to climb up to be able to get title shots regardless of a promotion you're signed with but that's what that would be my guess they'll get the cheap the cheapest fighters they can get crank through them use them as bodies to feed especially to uh the guys um who are from places they're trying to build a market in. You know, if they really want to get into a certain market, they really want to get into the French market, you can bet your butt there's going to be a bunch of French guys that they're cycling through and they're going to try to push in order to see if they can make one stick. Just say no, just say no. Is this the uh, cheat meal? Oh, okay, man. So it's one of the things I noticed. But being there, you know, people will know that you're going to have to work kind of hard on these hikes. It's a workout. You have to sleep outside. I don't, I don't think you probably get too many obese people who do a lot of camping. Am I wrong? It doesn't seem like a demographic that wants to be outside with bugs and climbing around rocks and stuff that didn't seem seem like it there were a bunch of uh raccoons they were outside around the tent at night making noise fighting with each other it was a trip it was wild you'd hear them like yeah probably like five feet four feet if the tent wasn't there and I could reach through the tent, I'd probably be able to grab me some raccoon. <laughs> oh. Hamza, Hamza, is, uh, Hamza Mir is saying, why isn't Dana promoting Moreno and Figueroa for me? They are the best fighters in the UFC, in my opinion. Haven't they fought three times or something already? It's just, it's hard, you know, they need a break if they've fought in a bunch of times already. It's just, I'm going to be a hard fight to sell when they've already, okay, they fought this many times already. I don't know if there's enough heat on that, on that fight. Um, they're both good. I don't know, man. It's just like it's hard to promote little guys, I think. It just is. Like, people are a little bit less interested in the little guys than they are bigger, bigger fighters. You know? That's not to say there aren't standouts at lighter weight classes, of course. But I think most most of the interest in the fights lays around 55 on up. I think the 25 and 35 and 45 are lacking depth. 45 does, you know, pretty good, but I, I don't know, man. It's just hard to get people interested in 125, 135 found fighter.
Oh, I keep coughing. Danny Arnold saying that's what I did today. Just said no chips and other garbage munchies. I'm a little proud of myself inwardly. I showed discipline and resisted the garbage munching. That's what it's all about, honestly. You know, because the people who were there were all capable of doing it. Everybody did it. Some people maybe worked harder than others, but they were capable of doing it. Even the people who were carrying 20 to 40 pounds of extra baggage, they didn't need to. And a lot of that is because of diet. They're eating way too much sugar, way too many calories they don't need. Oh, I bet they're eating a lot of processed food, a lot of seed oils. Just just the stuff you don't you don't need. And they need to switch that up and they could drop a lot of that extra poundage without having to do a, a bunch of extra, you know, ultra, altering your life around a bunch. The other thing they could do is resistance training, a small amount of resistance training. And, you know, they're already fit enough to do the three miles. Why not cut some of that excess and build some lean muscle? Because that's another reason why you know, you, you're carrying that extra fat around us. You're not, you don't have any lean muscle to burn up that extra calories. You don't have the lean muscle mass to help you, you know, promote testosterone production. Get that visceral fat, low T, man boobs, big belly. Then you got to try to walk up three flights of rock stairs in your, in your, 18 month old is having a hissy fit because it, it, they've walked 20 minutes straight and that's it. <laughs> they need a rest. You know, you're going to put yourself in that situation. Why put yourself in that situation when you could be a little more disciplined with your eating and do some resistance training get on the uh, resistance training. That's one of the biggest things you can do. Because I'm not doing much. I hit the bag every once in a while. Not very often. I teach and I lift. I do my lift. I do my Fit Smash strength program. Sometimes I mix in the bands for fun. I mix things up today. I was at uh, Dark Horse Gym doing some work and they got a bunch of different kettlebells. So I use the kettlebells to do a variation of my beach muscle lift. It was great. Enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> right? If you guys are looking for workout programs, you're looking for something to get yourself on the path to be in better shape, basic fitness, so you can do these type of three-mile hikes, you can take your kids to these things and not be embarrassed, Right? I don't I don't think you gotta be get a fighter. You don't gotta have you don't gotta be jack like this. Like that in my pink sungas. That's extra. You just have to be fit, be a little fit, so that you don't need to um Not go camping. <laughs> so you can go camping. So you can go on the hike. So you can get the stuff done. You know, it's a little bit of work. It's a little bit of discipline. If you need help, I've got programs. I've got a bunch of programs. Right? I've got a bunch of programs. The big one for your fitness and everything is the strength and fitness package. This will get you all of the uh, strength and fitness package stuff. The resistance band program, the 12 minute bike program, Fit Smash Strength, that's the uh, weight program I use. I created myself. You get the meal plan, kettlebell program, 
you'll get access to the Telegram accountability channel, right? So when you're struggling with that pack of uh, Oreo cookies, I can tell you to put them down. You can you can get some help, <laughs> right? You can help get some accountability so you're not lazy. You also get a one-hour consult. So everything can be explained to you and I can break down best course of action for you to get started, okay? Basic fitness. I'm not even writing you about learn how to fight yet. Not even on your butt about how to fight. Just fitness. Just trying to get you fit so that you can go on hikes with your family, <laughs> okay? So you can carry heavy stuff over to the camp site and your 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 woman doesn't have to worry about it right Ben Hunter is saying a variation of this topic comes up every week it isn't as much about good fights and upcoming fighters they only hype whatever is marketable. Yeah, you're right. It's like consumerism on super steroids. Um, Brandon Hunter again saying, this reminds me of the overweight people that use the carts at Walmart that are meant for disabled people. Yeah. It's not a disability. I'm not... I condone that as a disability. I never heard about that, Hamza. He says, are there still mask mandates at the Health Gracie Gym in uh, SA? Is that uh, Santa Ana? I'm not sure what SA is. He has a place in um, San Francisco, maybe met SF. But, you know, if he was in San Francisco, they might have had that. They're crazy up there, man. He's going to have to follow suit or I'm sure they shut the doors and go use the back door or something. Man, who knows? Like a lot of his clientele, because he's right in the San, Jose, San, uh, San Francisco, a lot of his clientele might be the people who are all, all pro that. So he might have to, for business, for money, he might have to go with it. Uh, in San Jose, I see. Oh, man, Max. Max uh, Dignitas says, Johnny, you're buying your meats at Costco. Everything is so expensive these days. Yes, I've been, uh, I've been, I buy, buy meat at Costco. I have for a number of years, like probably what, like, yeah, a number of years. Just, just because I have feeding boys and myself and whatever, I eat a lot of meat. So buying in bulk with the meat is the best thing to do. And Costco is, is reasonable, reasonable priced. And I've been playing around with the most cost-effective ways to eat meat out of, out of Costco. And for a little while, I had a little hack going on, and that was um, the brisket, the big beef brisket. And it was, it was averaging around 15 pounds. It was a big hunk of meat. There's usually a big chunk of fat on it too, but it's a big hunk of meat and it was more poundage for the price than the, uh, than the hamburger ground beef. Um, it was about three ninety nine a pound for the, uh, the brisket. It's, it's okay when you grill it, I put it in the air fryer and I put it in the air fryer and it took me a couple times to get the right length and time or whatever uh and temperature so it wasn't too tough but as long as i cut it up into small pieces afterwards it's no problem <laughs> and, but if you put it in the crock pot um my woman was cooking it in the crock pot for me 
and it just was like super tender and melted in your mouth and it was amazing so that was my little hack because the ground beef was like um 580 or 620 something like that a pound for the ground beef and that was you know way cheaper <laughs> and it, and the 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 crock pot was just such a better way to cook because she would put that in the morning and it would cook all day and we would have it for a few days and do another one a couple days later it was pretty great but the last time i went to costco i checked the price of the uh the brisket and it was already 30 for 50 cents more well from 3.99 to 4.49 i was like what is going on man so i uh, ended up buying the turkey the regular turkey, not the organic turkey, the regular turkey. And that's, I think it was like 358 per pound for the regular turkey. So I'm going to be eating turkey, I think, for a little bit and figuring <laughs> figuring that out. Because, um, you know, maybe more eggs and then the turkey. I've been making a lot of hard-boiled eggs and then just eating hard-boiled eggs. Put a little salt on my plate and then roll it in the plate and then eat not bad it's like a it's like a supplement it's a big giant pill that's what i like to think of it big giant pill check the messages here Sorry for my pause. <laughs> oh man, I can't read fast. Yep. Max says, uh, I'm here for that sweet brisket alpha. <laughs> alpha money. Yeah, dude, it's, um, it was great. And even still, you know, 449 for pound isn't bad. It's not bad. But you know, it's like a it's like almost a dollar more a pound than the the dang turkey. So I don't know. Maybe every once in a while I'll get it. But it was nice. It was, it was a good little run while it lasted. But I did that for several months and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I feel like it was the extra collagen and fat was like good for my joints. No, I do not know any good gyms in Arizona. <laughs> Danny Arnold says, I loved your uh, video short, by the way, on how to prepare your impossible meat properly. Yes. If you guys have not checked that short out. It was my first short. I didn't know how to do the shorts for the longest time, and then I figured out you have to upload it through your dang phone. So... We'll see if I can figure out some other shorts. And uh, yeah, that short didn't get that many views on Instagram because I'm censored, but it did pretty well on YouTube. So screw those guys. <laughs> oh man. All right, guys. So one of the other things I noticed when I was on my hike uh, while we were camping, there were a lot of rock climbers. Oh, sorry. That was a big cough. Coffee went down the wrong pipe. But there was a lot of rock climbers. And I thought that was really cool because they weren't super jag guys. They weren't big muscly guys. They weren't like me, you know. 
They weren't imposing looking people at all. But they were carrying big packs, heavy ropes, things with them as they're doing their walk. They're walking normal, not struggling in any sense. They're able to tie up and climb rocks and put in their all their anchors and everything. So super impressive, you know, but they're not, they're not jacked. They're not huge people. Definitely fit, strong, they're not carrying any extra body weight. You know, they were not chubby people. Um, I'm not saying everybody had like super flat six pack stomachs, but it's like a normal, healthy body. <laughs> if you looked at like olden time pictures, uh, black and white pictures of your average person's build it was probably more like that you know um because they could still could have been you know programmers and whatever during the day and sitting down a lot during the week but they definitely were fit enough to climb way the hell up high up on a rock i don't think i could do it's too much work i think it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And the reward is being at the top, I guess. Of the, I don't know. I'd rather fight somebody, I guess, to be at the top. I feel like I'd have to work hard just to get up there. I guess the view is really cool. It'll be cool. But they don't really look around. They just climb up and then they lay down or whatever but yeah I thought that was cool so you had some people who were toughening it out on the hike carrying extra body weight that if they cleaned up their diet and added a little bit of resistance training fit smash strength type resistance training use my meal plan to clean up their diet they wouldn't have to carry that extra extra weight around dragging them down. Because that's, man, it's got to be super sore. You're going to be super sore the next few days. And there's always possibility that you do get injured. Because maybe you use something too much. And then it gets uh, sore, broken. You get a stress fracture. You you. You get a bunion or something, you know, you strain yourself. So now you can't, can't walk right for a week. That's no good. Then what, you, you lay in your butt, you don't do work, you don't get things done, and you eat more. <laughs> you eat more calories, you eat more comfort food, balloon up, get even bigger. Work out. You got to work out. Basic level of fitness, guys. Basic level. You got to have a basic level of fitness. So you can do cool stuff. You can go to cool places. You're not going to. You're not going to date hot chicks. If you can't do cool stuff. You know. Very, very, very unlikely. You're going to have to have one hell of a personality. One hell of some game abilities and probably some money you're probably going to need the double whammy on those if you're going to be overweight to the point where you can't do fun stuff you can't do cool stuff you know i guess you could drive the boat when people go wakeboarding <laughs> but you should be able to to do stuff go on the hike it's a cheap date man you can get a nice hiking route, coffee, hike, you weed through some dull, some dull women quickly. There's a lot of dull ones, very basic ones. <clears throat> there are. Oh, Wayne Smith with the big one. Climbing is a great way to get high. Oh, man. Thank you very much, Mr. Chong.
That's uh, I guess that's one positive way to look at it. Oh, yes, my ego is much too large to allow me to get overweight, to become obese. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. I know what you're saying. Max says, good thing I'm too much of a narcissist to let myself get fat. Yeah. He's not wrong. You know, it's okay. to. I think that's, I think that's part of the plan. The plan. I think it's part of the plan. The people's plan. The bad people's plan. Right? It's like they feel everybody's mindful of this positive body positivity. I'm I'm great in the best now, no matter what. I'm awesome. I don't have to do anything to be better. And then you have that mentality, and you just let yourself go more. And then once you're super fat and obese, they can sick the robot dogs on you, and you can't you can't run away from a robot dog. If you're 40 pounds overweight, if you're obese, your ankles will blow out. Ankles gone, bro. Your ankles will be gone, and then the robot dogs, they'll be on you, and they got Gatling guns. They got the little minigun thing. That's it. You're done. Show me your papers, fatso. You don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. Yep. I tried it. I tried it for a little bit. I gave it a good shake, but nope. Hemza Mira says, John, you were a vegan back in the day. I tried it. Uh... I felt good at first, like the first month and a half, two months, because I'd switched from eating garbage and processed food to whole foods. And I still had steak like every two to three weeks. I'd have like four ounces steak or lamb every two to four weeks. Two, no, two to three weeks. Yeah, so it wasn't completely vegan. But I mean, you know, for three weeks. It's vegan. It's pretty good. And then four ounces of meat in three weeks. It's pretty good. But after a while, it, you know, the good benefits of eating whole foods and not eating the garbage I was eating before wore off because of not getting the protein and the satiation and the calories I needed from eating the, the meat and the animal products. So I slowly reintroduced the animal products, you know, higher quality versions of those animal products even started uh with milk and cheese again dairy and they're all great they're all great i think it's all awesome i'm doing great i feel great i look great My blood works great i think it was all scam to get us on the bugs get the pores get the pores on the bugs get the pores on the processed gelatinous bars the protein bars. Don't ask where the protein comes from. Soy bug protein juice bars. Nope. No thanks. Hamza, no. As long as UFC maintains its monopoly, it stays in charge. It could self implode, make mistakes, and screw itself up, but no one will. Competi competitively beat them. Not possible. They've got everything locked into place. Nobody can compete with them as, as is. Wayne Smith knows what's up. He says, the robot dogs will just blast you with do. Direct energy weapons. Boom. Scramble your brains. 
Yep, this is mostly my diet. Hamza says, I only eat meat and fruits. That's it. Yeah, that's a, a lot of what I eat also. Um, you know, I had pizza last night. It's cheat meal type stuff. But yeah, it's mostly what I eat. A lot of grapes. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong, Max. It says, yep, seems like chicken, ground turkey, eggs, and protein powder are going to get us through this recession. It may may get work, worse, man. There may be a lot more eggs going on. <laughs> I, you don't you don't know what's going to happen with this stuff, man. I don't know if the recession's recession. What if it's just the, the beginning of something worse? No, I don't eat raw organs. Hems, I do not eat raw organs. Uh, I cook my liver. I'll cook some liver, cut it up, and grind it up, put it in my ground beef. Yeah, man, I, I like I like milk. I think if you can afford it and you can find it, the, the raw milk, I think it's the way to go. It's pretty dang great, but it is pricey, man. I need to get my own cow or maybe a goat to milk. I don't know if I want to drink goat milk, though. Feels like it, doesn't it? Going in dry. Says they are fighting hard to make us weak. It really does. The amount of lying and misinformation and the stuff they're pumping into people. It's crazy. It's a wild time to be alive, man. It really is. Uh, yeah, Georges Saint-Pierre, probably, yes, I would say the hardest, the toughest guy I fought. Also probably think he's pound for pound best. And, uh, yeah, I think if I wouldn't have taken the stand I took against the UFC at the time I took it, then I wouldn't have gotten cut. And, you know, if I would have been a company man, and I think I would have been able to come back and win the title in his absence. I think it was very, very plausible. All right, guys, we're, we're getting close to the hour here and i want to direct your attention over to the uh, website so you guys can gaze upon its glory i want you guys to go to the website go to jamish.net sign up for the newsletter I'm gonna put the link to that newsletter in in the in the chat right now. That's happening. And you guys can sign up for the newsletter, and I can let you know about what's going on and other musings and stuff, other thoughts ideas i may throw some lessons about how to fight in there for free some wrestling some grappling some fighting stuff it's a wealth of knowledge come check it out and get your butts um over and sign up for a consultation sign up for a consultation for the uh, the fitness program, get on the get on the links below. Go to Gum Roads and find the Strength and Fitness package. Get yourself started All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, it was nice talking to y'all.
Basic level fitness, guys. Basic level fitness. You got to do it. You got to keep it up. It's not, it's not cute. It's not cool. It's not funny to let yourself go. It's not okay to have a big fat belly while you're watching the sports ball. You can, you can do better. You can get yourself in better shape. You can eat better food. And that frees you up when you get yourself on a good meal plan. It frees you up to eat the snacks. I was able to eat some some snack stuff when we're camping. I'm able to eat pizza yesterday for dinner when we got back. I'm still I'm still lean and mean. The regularly scheduled meals makes it easier to recover from the cheats. Those cheat meals don't mean much. I was able to get my workouts in today. I did some teaching. I'm feeling good. Feeling good. I'll have some, uh, I'll probably have some more uh, grapes, some frozen grapes before I go to bed. That's right. I'm living on the edge, guys. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Next, we have some bigger fights coming up, bigger fights. I'll be catching the fights. I'll watch the fights. And then we'll be able to talk about the fights next time. All right, guys. I'll check you all later.